Everyone knows the feel-good story of a celebrity that became successful overnight. But how about those celebrities who failed before succeeding? These celebrities each began with lackluster beginnings in their careers or even personal lives, and we could all learn something from them. If they can follow failure with success, so can we. Here are six inspiring famously successful celebrities that you didn't realize were downright failures at first. Fame and fortune are the two most common goals people have. And and there's one thing that nearly every celebrity has in common. They've all failed before they became famous. Some of them even failed miserably over and over until they finally succeeded. You may know these celebrities, but you probably never knew their stories. The world is filled with successful failures. Many of them had to overcome the doubters, the setbacks, and the disappointments along their path to the top. They were tenacious and it paid off big time. They inspire others to take risks and see failure, not as a bad thing, but how how can failure be our friend? We learn some of our best lessons through failure. Failure inspires us. If we look at it properly and don't allow it to define us, failure can be a great source of motivation. These stars have proved we can't be afraid of failure. We have to embrace it. Once we come to terms with having failed, we can take greater risks. Failure makes success taste even better. Let's take a look at some of the most notable examples. Starting with Walt Disney. Walt Disney had a string of failures before he finally achieved achieved massive success. In his first job as a newspaper editor, he was fired because he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. He then went on to start a number of businesses, which all failed, including his first animation company. In 1921, he made a deal with a distribution company. He would ship them his cartoons in New York and get paid six months later. With the loss of his first business, Disney packed his bags, took off for Los Angeles with just $40 in his pocket, and tried his hand at acting. But that didn't work out either. Rumor has it that at one point, he was living off dog food and could not pay his rent. Still, there was a silver lining in his move. Noticing that there were no animation studios in California, Walt convinced Roy, his brother, to join him out west so they could start their own business together. Not long after, Disney found his first major success when he created Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Only after years of trying and never giving up did he become one of the most successful filmmakers of all time and went on to be nominated for 59 Oscars. Up next is Stephen King. Stephen King may have built a successful career off his horror stories, but it wasn't always this way. His story is inspiring. It's about a man who never stopped doing what he loved most, writing. Well, in elementary school, King started writing. He enjoyed it and did it for fun. His mother saw that he was operating out of passion and decided she wanted to motivate him to pursue his dream of becoming an author. She would give him 25 cents every time Time he wrote something new, and boy did he write a lot. But although he kept on submitting his work, he kept getting rejected. The King family's life was not as opulent as one might imagine. They lived in a double-wide trailer, drove an old car that broke down often, and couldn't even afford a telephone. One of King's most successful books, Carrie, was rejected by publishers 30 times before finding a home, one of whom told him that negative utopias don't sell. It's said that after so many rejections, King gave up and threw the manuscript in the bin. Luckily for us, his wife retrieved it and urged him to have another go. Even though he's now a multi-millionaire and a best-selling author, Stephen King used to battle with alcohol and drug addiction. Drugs and alcohol were his coping mechanism when he faced rejection as an author. He eventually published Carrie and the rest is history, the story of a writer whose books made him rich and famous. It's not hard to learn something from this famous writer. Just look at his early days when he had to live in poverty and compare it to his his situation now. It shows even someone who lives in the worst conditions can have a successful life. Now we have Oprah Winfrey. Imagine being born in rural Mississippi in 1955 to a teenage mother who was already poor. Imagine suffering abuse from the time you were 9, then running away from home at 13, becoming pregnant at 14, and losing your first child. Now imagine you're Oprah Winfrey. Sounds implausible? Oprah was able to turn the tables on her disadvantaged upbringing but it took guts and grit. From a young age, this girl was a force to be reckoned with, a force so powerful it would change the world. And she did, becoming a communications major in college and landing her first post-graduation job at a Nashville station. Soon after that, she was hired as a primetime news co-anchor. The network wanted to broaden
broaden their viewership, so they published the debut of her talk show. Suddenly, Oprah was thrust into the spotlight with high expectations. When the show failed, she was blamed, and not her old white male co-host. She was demoted to a writing and reporting job, a less prestigious position. But she was a slow writer and too caring for the kind of hard-nosed reporting required. Oprah Winfrey herself looks back on these years as a failure. However, she didn't give up. She realized that while she loved television, she preferred human interest stories to hard news, and that being a host required significant chemistry with a co-host. One of the first jobs she had in television ended abruptly when the producer declared that she was unfit for television. They're eating their words now. Oprah's luck changed when she accepted a job co-hosting a show called People Are Talking with Richard Schur. The show was successful enough to run for five years. Then she was recruited to host a morning talk show in Chicago. That show became a household name and Oprah became an international sensation. The moral of the story is, follow your dreams and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Next on our list is a name that is now known worldwide, J.K. Rowling, the author of the hugely successful Harry Potter series, who has since become a multi-millionaire, had anything but a smooth ride to success. By the time she had finished her first book in the series, she was divorced, on welfare, and raising a child alone. In 1986, J.K. Rowling graduated from the University of Exeter and started working at various jobs. Seven years later, she was jobless and a single parent with no source of income. She was also diagnosed with clinical depression at this time. While living off government benefits in small cafes around Edinburgh, J.K. Rowling wrote the first manuscript of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Twelve major publishers rejected the Harry Potter manuscript. Finally, a year later, Bloomsbury accepted it and extended a very small 1,500-pound advance, about $2,500. No doubt, it was one of the best decisions that the publishing house has ever made. If you need further inspiration from her success, she said this in an interview with Oprah Winfrey. Failure, says Rowling, failure is so important. It doesn't get spoken about enough. We speak about success all the time, but you know, I don't know any, I haven't met, and I've been so fortunate and met extraordinary people through Harry Potter, and not one of them didn't have their failure. More than one failure. Bill Gates may be one of the richest men in the world now, but he struggled to find his niche early on. Bill Gates is what many people would aspire to be, a billionaire. But not everyone knows that the very Microsoft co-founder wasn't all always as successful as he is today. In fact, Gates had to go through failure before he could reach the top. Thankfully, his determination to achieve his dream led us all to be blessed with Microsoft. Throughout high school, Gates was amazing at most subjects. English, science, and math were a breeze for him, but he didn't quite have the college spirit. He enrolled at Harvard University in 1973, intending to pursue a law career, but he changed his mind later on and dropped out of college in 1975. He didn't drop out because he couldn't deal with the work, but he did it because he wanted to work on a business with his partner Paul Allen. Many people don't know that, before getting rich with Microsoft, Bill Gates and Paul Allen had a failed business partnership. Their first business, Trafodata, was a good idea but with a flawed business model, and the company failed. Despite the fact that Trafodata was a failure, Gates and Allen do not regret it. The success might have been limited, yet it was necessary for their Microsoft adventure later on. Allen declared, in my experience, each failure contains the seeds of your next success, if you are willing to learn from it, and you can be sure Gates felt the same way. In 1986, Microsoft went public and became one of the most successful businesses in the world. If there's one thing these famous examples show us, it's that success is possible and even the most successful people on the planet had their share of failures on the way to greatness.